Uh, can we all welcome John Curtis? Thank you very much. Oh, bless you, darlings. Thank you ever so much. Um, where do I start? John Curtis, I am a journalist, so I'm a motoring journalist. I write for the Daily Record. Sorry about that. Uh, every week, so I have a column in the Daily Record, and I talk about cars. I talk about sustainability. I talk about doing things better, more resource efficient, less emissions, all that kind of stuff, because I'm passionate about it. Six years ago, I joined the Scottish Government as the head of sustainable transport, something I knew bugger all about. And I remember sitting at my desk and thinking, biofuels. I've no idea what biofuels are, and it was written on a memo somewhere that I needed to meet somebody about biofuels. I put it into Google, Wikipedia came up, it told me what biofuels were, and I thought, okay, that's the start of a journey. I don't know where it's gonna take me, but it will take me somewhere, because I didn't know about biofuels like I didn't know much about the Internet of Things. And over the course of two or three years, I put in all the policies for Scotland about electric cars, biofuels, hydrogen vehicles, renewable energy, sustainable transport, so buses, trains, planes, hydrofoils, hovercrafts, you name it, I've written policies about it. God, it's boring being a civil servant. Who's a civil servant in the room? You. Boring? <laughs> yeah, there you go, it's boring. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to get Tim's attention. Tim. Can you, like, are those one of these? So one of these? Yeah. Okay. Is it full? Is it cold? This one is full. It is cold. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, the thing, as you see, the thing is, a civil servant would have had to have had a focus group about that, would have had to sit and write policies about that for at least three months before we actually delivered anything of value. So I wasn't really cut out to be a civil servant, and I was sitting writing all this guff about people should be using electric cars and they should be reducing their emissions and nobody cares. Who drives an electric car in this room? Anybody? There you go. No. You've driven one. I, but you... I put a deposit down on the Tesla. Good man. Well done you. Me and you both. Um, yeah, not many people have driven them. Not many people would recognise one if it ran you over. And I thought, I've just wasted two years of my life writing policies about something I really care about Nobody else gives a stuff about. Nobody understands, sir. I saw one at Stirling's Motorway Services last week. Um, it was a Honda, and the, the, the electric refuel point is a Nissan one, and he didn't have the compatible connector. Exactly. So the lack of so exactly. So the EU um, hasn't written the the policy. Guys, well, I think we need to keep questions to the end. We're going to do a, a five um, side chat with Emma and then we'll do Q&A at the end. Is that alright? Yeah, right? absolutely. It's, it, it's an interesting point and one that, point well made, that, that frustrates me massively because when you sit there and you write the policies, either it's writing them for Scotland, the UK go and do something completely different because they have powers over that. Europe does something different. The Japanese, they're busy doing something completely different. There's no consistency, there's no sharing of information and worst of all, there's no focus on you, the people who might actually use them. Nobody cares what you want. What they deliver is what they can make. We're technology-led rather than being market pull. So you as the market should be saying, I want better, cleaner, cheaper transport. And if you do want that, who do you tell? How do you get it? Because we're being stitched up by the public transport authorities who take 14% of our disposable income for transport. 14! In Spain it's 2%. In Germany it's 3%. In the UK it's 14% to give us a crap service. That can't be good. Transport's broken, fundamentally broken. And I left the Scottish Government three and a half, nearly four years ago, because I was frustrated. I was frustrated that I was writing all these policies to help save lives. You know that emissions from the back of cars are nasty things, yes? We've seen the Volkswagen scandal, we've seen the Mitsubishi scandal. Frankly, they're all at it. All of the car manufacturers, they allow vehicles to emit emissions into the world that kill us. How many people do you think every year in the UK die as a result of transport emissions? Give me a number. 50,000. 50, is a bloody good number. It's 5.5 million, thank you Ewan, Professor Ewan. 
5.5 million people worldwide die every year as a result of poor air quality. 5.5 million. Now, I don't want to downplay the Hillsborough stuff that's going on at the moment. 96 people died. A terrible, terrible tragedy. And the news is full of it. 40,000 people last year died through poor air quality, and nobody cares. That's got to change. How do you make that change happen? How do you find out about low emission vehicles? How do you find out about better transport? How do you find out that there is a better way? Who's going to tell you? Me. That's who. So I left the Scottish Government four years ago, and I set up Revolutional. Revolutional is a business which fundamentally looks to improve transport by doing two things. One, transport for Scotland, which is a transport integrator. When you want to go from point A to point B, you might have to use multiple modes of transport. So you might have to use your feet to walk to a point where you pick up a bus or a bike or something to take you part way, where you might interface with a train. You get on the train and you go along your journey, you get the other end and you walk again. And none of these things are connected. None of the systems are connected. None of the timetables are connected. So if I want to look at Lothian buses and the trains, I have to look at two different timetables. There's nobody that can tell you how you get from here to my home in Falkirk, the complete journey, and allows you to book it. That's nonsense, utter nuts. So we're setting up something called Transport for Scotland, working with CGI, a big consultancy firm, to look at integrating transport, knitting everything that we've got in central Scotland together so that you can make informed choices about how you move about. We do things through habit. We do things because we've always done them. 50% of people moving between Edinburgh and Glasgow drive. 50% drive. And the average cost of driving from Edinburgh to Glasgow and parking all day and driving back is £58 a day. Yet you can do that journey for £23 a day on the train. So why are people spending £35 a day more than they need to to go in their car? I don't understand, but part of it's because they haven't got the information. The other thing I'm doing is Revolutional World, and this is the sexy, exciting bit. Oh, oh, oh. sorry, Poppy, got a bit excited there. Um, Revolutional World. About 18 months ago, I did a feasibility study for the Edinburgh Centre for Carbon Innovation. And the feasibility study looked at, was there a commercial model for sustainable transport? Could it wipe its face or did it need to be government subsidised? And having come from the government, I thought, yeah, just chuck loads of government money at it, it'll work. And people will buy electric cars. There are 2.9 million cars in Scotland and just about 2,000 electric cars. Oops. We've got a big problem, because the Scottish Government have said by 2050 there will be no petrol cars, there will be no diesel cars. And at the moment we've got 2,000 electric vehicles, 0.0001% of all the cars on the road are electric or low emission. We're doomed, we're doomed, as they say. It's not good. How on earth are we going to sell 2.9 million electric vehicles, low emission vehicles, hydrogen vehicles, using biofuels, using seawater, air. They all exist. Many of you won't know that because you're specialists in your field. But I'm a specialist in mine and I want to share with you that specialism. I want to share with you that knowledge. So what we're doing is as a result of that, that um, feasibility study, we realized that we needed somewhere to show you how you can use an electric vehicle, hydrogen vehicles, low emission vehicles, sustainable transport, get better transport for moving people and things about. And we came up with this madness. It's called Revolutional World. First one's maybe, maybe going to be in Falkirk, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, it's a 10,000 square metre. If you can see right at the top, there's a kind of green croissant sausagey thing. That's the building, 10,000 square metres, sustainably built, carbon neutral run operation with a 1.2 mile test track, uh, which has access to 
the 1.2 million people who go to Falkirk to look at the Kelpies. Have you heard of the Kelpies? Two big steel horses in a field? Yeah. 1.2 million people go there every year. And then they go home again, saying, well, they were nice. And that's it. And you think, oh my God, there's a massive opportunity to talk to people, to engage with people, to get them to understand that actually they could do things better, greener, cheaper. Oh, I like commercial opportunity. So, talk to Falkirk Council and they said, yeah, we can give you that piece of land, 12 hectares. Yep, we can do a deal on that. So we started with the planners to, uh, to get th the permission to build that. And I was introduced to a man, a man called Jonathan Guthrie from the Scottish Government. And Jonathan said, we've got some investors who might be interested in helping you on this journey to create this building. This building will cost about 60 million quid. I don't have 60 million quid. You may notice there is bog all in my pockets. So I need somebody with very, very deep pockets and lots of money to help me do this. And Jonathan introduced me to a man called Dr. Peter Zhang. I'll explain about Dr. Peter Zhang in a minute. A Chinese man. He and I sat down for about 45 minutes and he's got more wealth than you can ever imagine. If I tell you that he's investing at 11.8 billion in HS2 rail, if I tell you he's investing 3.8 billion in Hinkley Point Power Station down in Somerset, the nuclear power station, this guy is seriously minted. I got to chat to him. And he said, hmm, like your plan, but it's a bit small. Okay, I said, what's, what's the kind of scale of things that you would invest in? And he said, well, you tell me 20 sites you want to build in, we're in. Quick bit of maths, 1.2 billion. And he said, yeah, we can do that. And I fell over. Uh, so, 1.2 billion to deliver 20 of these centres around the world to help reduce the emissions from transport, to save some lives, to make a difference. And that's what drives me. But I like to have a bit of fun. So what we'll have is a connected, sustainable business with a bit of Disney magic thrown in. Because people need to learn. You need to learn about low emission vehicles. You need to want to drive one. Emma, you've driven an electric car. Simon, you've ordered a Tesla. Have you ever driven one? I was kidding. You unspeakable I wretch. <laughs> I wish I had, though. Has anybody the, else driven the one? The amount of people who have placed an order on a Tesla is, is astonishing. 320,000 people ordered one in, in two days. So you've driven one. What did you think of the electric car you drove? Absolutely terrible. What was it? Enfield. Oh, well, that's going back. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Things have moved on, fortunately. Yes, I uh, but, um, it was. It was not uh, ready for flight. No, no. no. Uh, Tesla is getting there, but, they, but they've got some problems. They do have some problems. Not to sixty in two point eight seconds. Three hundred and thirty mile range. A hundred thousand pounds. I actually drove a Leaf. I just remembered mm -hmm. it was at the motor show. Yeah. It was up in the NC Birmingham. Yeah, they had kind of an yeah. indoor track and you could just get in and drive it around. It was kind of a, a, a peculiar, first of all to be driving a car indoors with no yep. sound, engine sound was very weird. And I'm a you know, fully fledged petrol head, so I like the sound of a V8. No, no I'm thinking the Leaf has a sound generator to, to warn people on the road. Uh, it does. You know, if it's, if it yeah, but it, was, it just felt weird. Under it, 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 it switched off in, indoors. No, under 15 kilometres it's always on. Uh, so yes, so absolutely. I was a Nissan ambassador, so I sell them for a living. <clears throat> yeah, it's quick too. So an electric car, 0 to 60 in the Nissan Leaf was about eight seconds. Uh, the acceleration is like a 2.8 petrol, if that gives you any idea at all. It's quick. You can feel it in your back. And people always imagine electric cars, especially, are slow. They're like milk floats. That ain't the case, and that's why we need the track. We need you to get out there and have some fun. Say fun, 70 mile an hour fun, not 110 mile an hour mental stick it in a gravel trap fun, but good fun so that you can compare like for like. So you can go to Ford, Vauxhall, Nissan, and so on and so on and so on, and compare like for like and see which you like. If you like none of them, that's fine. Keep doing what you're doing. I have no problem with that. Perhaps you want to learn about 
the best ways of walking, the best routes for walking, green tourism, and how you get around Scotland without polluting the planet. I'm not a lentil munching sandal wearer. I am a real human being. I have a three litre diesel outside, Jaguar XFS, 0 to 16, 5.9 seconds quicker than a Porsche. Okay, so I, I come from the real world where people will always want to have fast, dirty cars. However, there's a better way of doing lots of the journeys that we do. I have a Nissan Leaf. My Nissan Leaf is electric. It costs me 2p a mile to run. Petrol car, about 16p a mile. So I'm, I'm quidsing, saving money hand over fist. And that's why I do it, because it's better value, better for the environment. The business, unfortunately a lot of this you can't read, um, is around managing the negative impacts of transport. We all know that there are costs associated with transport, whether it be trains, buses, whatever it might be. They create noise, pollution, they're not good things. We can do it better. The electrification of the line between Edinburgh and Glasgow is a good example. With investment and with the right thinking, we can do better things. But this is a market that's massive. The electric vehicle market in the UK is estimated to be worth £51 billion every year by 2030. £51 billion just in the UK, this tiny little dot in the middle of nowhere. I've got an opportunity to go out to 20 markets and work with people to help them understand what we can do with low emission vehicles. And we do that in a number of ways. I mentioned smart tourism, green tourism. We want people to come to Scotland to enjoy. Why do they come to Scotland? They come to look at its geography. It's a beautiful country. It has fantastic people, fantastic cities and towns. It is stunning. And we throw them into a hire car and we say, go and pollute our lovely country. It's mental, absolutely mental. So let's give them electric cars with a decent charging infrastructure. That works. That you don't rock up to a charger and it's broken and we go, mm, Scotland, eh? <laughs> Which is what we do at the moment. Uh, an education centre. It's really important. Those two little people down there, they're my most important customers, Rory and Poppy because they're the people who really matter. By the time we decarbonise road transport, most of us in this room will be pushing up the daisies or will certainly have a wrinkle or two. These two matter. These two shouldn't... Oh, you're not embarrassed, are you? <laughs> These two shouldn't have to put up with the crap that we throw at them. That's not right. There are better ways of doing this. So, educating young people to say that renewable energy is the way to go. We know this in Scotland. 13,000 people are dependent upon the, re the renewable energy industry in Scotland. Let's build on that, the Alex Salmond era, if you like, with a sustainable transport network that uses that renewable energy. Much of the renewables that we generate, we don't store because we haven't got the methodology. But here's the thing, electric cars store electric. Hydrogen cars can store electric. They are storage vectors for the energy industry. We can actually trap, capture the free energy that we have in Scotland and use it for ourselves. Free energy. What's not to like? A business centre, so many businesses. Emma, you worked for a company called Root Monkey. Root Monkey was a company that looked at how you use vehicles mm -hmm. and do it more effectively, more efficiently, by optimising the routes, the ways that people go. Because traditionally what we do is we either get into a car and say, I know how to get there, and we just go. Whether it's a good route, worse route, don't really know. We just do it, because that's what we've always done. Your company used to do something about that. Still do something about that, you don't. Because you left. <laughs> There's also fleet optimization. So within a fleet of vehicles, uh, the Scottish Government have got 300 vehicles. They've only just bought two electric vehicles, and they've bought those as a kind of tick in a box, really. But what they don't realise is that they could actually have about 80% of their vehicles as electric vehicles, reduce the cost of running them. But they don't know that because they don't know what their journey profiles are. They say, we're too busy governing to worry about how many miles we do and what fuel we use. Business people say, oh, I'm too busy fixing computers to worry about that. I've got a business to run. I can't be doing that. 
what we can do is we can say, okay, let's have a look at how your business operates. Let's look at what fleet you have. Let's look how we optimize your routes and optimize your fleet makeup to get the very best out of the money that you spend. The bit that might be interesting to you is we, we have something called the collaboratory. The collaboratory. It's not a word that trips off the tongue when you're doing a presentation. Uh, the collaboratory is where we get people to come along and work with us to refine product, to get to customers. We're going to have 800,000 customers walking through the door every year. These are real people who we can test product on, get quick feedback, give it back to people who invent things, come up with new solutions, to hone it, polish it, make it better. So that might be something which is of value. We'll have shared services, spaces where people can come and work. So if you want to work with some of the industry experts that I work with, you can. So if you have an interest, let's say, in Wi-Fi and how Wi-Fi works on trains and on buses so that we can get it better, faster. I work with Abelio, I work with First Bus, I work with Stagecoach all day, every day in the other piece, which is Transport for Scotland, in integrating this transport. So we can put you with the right people to help you make those connections to refine your business. Uh, we're taking Revolution on tour uh, whilst we're building these other centres. Um, so we'll go to Aberdeen, we'll go to Inverness, we'll go to Glasgow. We're not just going to be stuck in Falkirk, the middle of nowhere. Falkirk's important because it's... <laughs> go on. Sorry. No, 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 I love it. I love a bit of laughter. It's not usual in my presentations. Go on. What's funny? Falkirk, get to Falkirk. What, what's funny? Just in general. <laughs> Do you know what? One of the funny things is that I had an investor say that. And he, said, he said to me, Falkirk, are you serious? I'm like, uh-huh. It's equidistant between Edinburgh and Glasgow. There's like four million people in that central belt of Scotland. If you put it in Glasgow, nobody from Edinburgh will go because they're too posh. If you put it in Glasgow, uh, no, uh, anyway, the other way around, the others won't go. Stick it in the middle, one of two things will happen. Either every bugger will go, or no bugger will go. One way or the other, we've got to give it a go because we've got two airports, Edinburgh and Glasgow, which can feed it, and part of the mission is to help sell this to civic leaders, is to say, come to Scotland, see how we do renewable energy, low emission transport, and all the tech that connects it all up, smart grid technology, all that IoT stuff that you guys are really good at. How do we make that work in an export sense? So we bring these civic leaders to Scotland and we say, fly into Falkirk, fly, uh, fly into Falkirk. Do you know what, there nearly was a Falkirk airport. Did you know that? No, there you go, you see. Uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow, fly into either one of those. Come and visit our centre and you can see what's going on. Three motorways around Falkirk, go on. Why not Stirling or Livingston? Basically. Do you want me to be honest? Do you want me to be honest? I live in Falkirk. That's the best reason. No, seriously, um, we've got three motorways that run around the, out, the exterior of Falkirk. We have the biggest port in Scotland with 150,000 containers. So there are some very, very good reasons. Another good reason is that Alexander Dennis, the bus manufacturer, who are the world's leading hybrid bus manufacturers, are based in Falkirk. They will use our track for testing purposes. At the moment, here's a mad story. At the moment, Alexander Dennis, when they build a bus, they send it from Falkirk to Guildford in England to test it. And then they drive it all the way back again. Because they haven't got a track up here that they can use. So part of the deal is that we will be able to help them to test their vehicles in Falkirk. So that's part of the reason. Now then, let me just show you, if I can, doesn't look like I can. I was going to show you a video, but it doesn't seem to want to play. Ah, there we are. Ooh. Ooh. Have I done bad things? Yeah. Yes. It's not going to work. I was wondering why pictures of Emma's kids were on your computer. <laughs> it's not going to work. Yeah. I've lost my screen. Alan! Help! Yeah, no, no pressure. So anyway, Falkirk is just the start. Um, this is going to sound mental, seeing as I was a civil servant four years ago, but the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi phoned our architects. 
well, not him personally, but one of his officials, and said, we've heard about this revolutional world thing. It was put in for a, an architecture award uh, in February. And he said, we like it. We like one. <laughs> we said, pardon? This guy uh, is worth 150 billion. Uh, Mohammed Al Nayan, and he is the crown prince of Abu Dhabi. So we are now working with his officials to get Revolutional World started in Abu Dhabi. And it may well be that that's quicker than doing it in Falkirk, funnily enough, because when the crown prince says yes, everybody says okay. So Falkirk is a bit challenging, but Abu Dhabi is a piece of cake. Thank you, Alan, very much for making that work. Uh, as, as I say, the Future Projects Award for 2016, we were put in for that, and that's where the Crown Prince's people saw it. A building is based on the Tesla coil. So some may know of the Tesla coil. It's kind of important for electric motors. Uh, it's there. Uh, what we did was we stuck two together, made a kind of croissant shape, and then we made it full of solar panels and seed them so that we can collect all the rainwater. Again, it sounds really kind of tree huggery. It's not. It's just making the best use of the resources we've got. We've got lots of sunshine. We've got lots of rain. Now, I'm not going to bother with... I'm not even going to try and do that video. There's a video in there. Shall I try? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Give it a whirl. Let's give it a try. Would you play, please? Oh, here we go. This is the sort of thing we're going to do to get people involved, to get people understanding, to have some fun. This piece of kit is 50 grand. So we can have Formula E cars, racing cars, that don't use any power at all, mocked up on these screens, curved screens, about 270 degrees. And believe me, that feels like you're in the car. Oculus Rift, you'll have seen the Oculus Rift headsets. We'll be using those as well to give people a real excitement factor. Because at the moment, if you want to see an electric car, good luck with that, because we can actually model anything. So if you want to have the Enfield from 1900 and frozen to death, we can model that and we can make it happen. If you want a 1920s New York truck that was electric, 30% of them were in the 1920s, we can do that. We can make that do anything. So you can take it out on the track, you can sit inside and play, or you can just go completely bonkers and drive a Nordschleifer and a Ferrari. You choose. But it's about engaging with people. It doesn't matter whether you're disabled and you need mobility, and that's the first type of vehicle of its kind, where you can just wheel straight into a car. How wrong is that? That we've got people for years who've been unable to move around. Right, shut up now. You've done your thing that we've, we've had people who have been stuck in wheelchairs for God knows how long, yet somehow we haven't managed to get that to the big wide market. Falkirk is full of disabled people. There used to be a mobility centre. I absolutely mean this. It's true. It's the centre of disability in Scotland. So this is really important for our people. We do the things that the market needs, but most important, it's about engaging with people, whether they be business people or um, consumers. Another video. Let's try this one. We want to show you the art of the possible. So this is the Faraday Future. This is one of the most amazing vehicles I have ever seen. And it's real. I don't know if that helps. So you can set up the car yourself using your smartphone. So you can give it more torque, less torque, quicker acceleration. You can change the suspension, the brake settings, everything using an app. This is what we can do. This is what we can bring to Scotland. This is what we can show the world. Everything from a Renault Twizy quadricycle right through to a million pound electric vehicle. And there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't do it, other than the market isn't doing it itself. We have to make it happen. So by bringing together all of the right tools and techniques, all the right products, all the right services, the right people, doing it in the right way, we can make a difference. We can do something different. There's that old adage, if you keep doing the same things in the same way, you get the same results. 
we're going to do something different with somebody else's money. <laughs> That's why Falkirk. Just because I preempted the question. Uh, so 2.3 billion is being spent on redeveloping that particular area. Nobody really cares. 2.3 billion. That's jobs. That's people. That's real people like you and me who can come and live in this place where 1.2 million people come look at two steel horses and think Falkirk's a joke. And that's a fact. We can change that. God, I've got a challenge on. Um, the investors. That's who I was talking about. Two of them. Dr. Peter Zhang. That's him there. Nicola Sturgeon and Sir Richard Haygate, they were signing a memorandum of understanding. You might have read it about it in the newspapers just recently because there's been a hell of a stooshy about it. £10 billion pound coming to Scotland. I've got £1.2 billion, apparently. Um, and His Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan. Bless his little heart, because he wants one too. The team is very small. At the moment, it's me and my missus. We've done all this ourselves, everything. I've been on this journey for 18 months now, and every day has been spent developing this concept, developing this way of pulling together sustainable transport and getting the investment done. We're there. We're ready to go. Planning application notice is in for Falkirk. Abu Dhabi looks like it's a go. London, the mayor's office in London, we're on last week, and we're doing one in London. It's all going a bit Pete Tong, really. Um, but I'm a simple person. We're going to have a head of people, because people matter. It's the most important thing in my world. A head of money. I'm not doing directors of finance and all that cobblers. I just want to know how much is in, how much is out, how much have I got. It's ever so simple. Head of buildings, because buildings are important. They house all the stuff that we do. A head of fun. Sadly, not me. Um, but that's somebody who's going to make sure that the customer experience is second to none. This is not going to be like going to a car dealership or going to your train station. You are going to get the very, very best customer service it is humanly possible to give. Not because we're smarty pants, but because you matter. Peter Zhang said to me, you don't need to make money. You need to change Scotland. And again, I nearly fell over because I was expecting him to say I need an 8% return on my investment. And he didn't. He said, you need to make a difference. Nobody else can, nobody else will. I thought, okay, that's a challenge. We've got a head of tech, because an awful lot of this stuff is gonna be necessary to engage with people. And we all take different messages from different things. So renewable energy really matters to some people, doesn't matter a damn to anybody else. But you can't make electric vehicles work properly without it, so it's important. At the moment, I've invested about 400,000 in this, in my own money. Uh, I'm pretty much broke. Um, but the 1.2 billion should help. Um, some other guys, Think Curious and WSP, a couple of agencies and architects, have been incredibly supportive in bringing this to fruition. But as you can see, uh, international rollout will be starting in January 2017. I've got a lot to do this year to get the plans through for Falkirk in 2016. Uh, but we've got London and Abu Dhabi, which are likely to open in 2018, along with Falkirk. So I'm opening three of these by 2018. It's a good job I'm bald, because I would be by the end of that. But the work then is not done. And this is not pie in the sky. And, and if I was sitting where you are, I'd think, he's mad. He's utterly mental. You can't do that. 20 of these centres in four years. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to give it a good go. Again, because it matters. Look at the places that we've chosen. Mumbai, Delhi, Beijing, Seoul. The numbers of people that die there as a result of air quality. I saw some face masks that were taken, uh, photographs of face masks that were taken today with the uh, pollution caught in the gauze of these face masks. It is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And it's going into people's lungs every day. It is the new smoking. And you heard it here first. Driving a diesel, what I do, is just the new smoking. And it is going to bite us all. A low emission zone is coming to Scotland by 2018. Has anybody seen that? No? Go and have a look at the SNP manifesto. The SNP are almost certainly going to form the next government in Scotland. They have committed to a low emission zone in Scotland by 2018. 
we are not prepared, we are not ready. We cannot do this unless we get our act together. And I'm hoping that with a lot of help in Scotland, we can prepare Scotland for it and make a difference. We can make some money too. I reckon that we can turn over about 57 million a year in our first year um, with 30 million a cost. So it's hugely expensive, massively expensive. The majority of our cost, as with most businesses, is people. You won't be interviewed for this job, you'll audition, because this is a performance every day. This is not going to be like any job you've ever had before. We don't want grey, boring, unhappy, coming to work because you have to, people. You have to be like me, you have to want to be there. You have to want to make a difference. And if you don't, don't bother coming. Transport for Scotland, very quickly explained, this integrated transport piece. Edinburgh in the east, Glasgow in the west, a train line which runs through the middle, and what we're doing is we're taking all of these operators and we're integrating them into one package so that you as a customer can use your smartphone to access a lot of information and services. The vision is that one day you will be able to pay us a fixed fee, let's say £300 a month. And for your £300, you can go anywhere within 100 miles. You can get a taxi, you can get a bus, you can get a train, you can get a hire bike, you can get an electric car. You just pay us the money, off you go. If you want a taxi within 15 minutes, you pay us 300 quid. If you're a business user and every second counts, you might pay us 600 and you'll get a taxi within five minutes. You can go 200 miles free and so on and so on. We build packages like we do with mobile phones. So that's what we're working towards now with a Bellio, First Bus, Stagecoach, CGI, to make integrated transport work so that you get a better deal. Because at the moment, you're paying a lot more than that. Five, six, seven hundred pounds for your car, for the way that you move around, for your season ticket, and multiple season tickets that you don't use all the time. Again, there's a better way. We're on a journey. I'd like you to come too. So if you've got something that you can add to this party, and it's going to be a hell of a party, find me at John W. Curtis's Twitter, John Curtis at revolutional.com, John dot Curtis at revolutional.com is who I am. 07515761300. Find me. Emma knows me well. I was going to say intimately, and that's wrong. Well. <laughs> Simon can get hold of me anytime. Find me. If you can make a difference, if you can make that happen, if you know something, someone, somehow, that can save one life because we do things better and we can save some money and we can have some fun at the same time, you might just be for us. Thank you very much. <laughs>